Good morning. Got my neuro coffee in hand. Actually, let me take a hit. Mm, that's perfect. Okay, so I got a new shirt on. I got it from my buddy Flick. Uh, yesterday we had lunch. Uh, I've known Flick for 43 years. He kind of knows me pretty well. So this was a very, very pleasant surprise. So uh, thanks Flick for that. I truly, truly appreciate it. I got a question regarding some pelvis orientation and some hip measures that are associated with those orientations. And I still think there's some confusion in regard to the influence of the, the ISA IPA relationship. So let's go over that. So under normal circumstances with a narrow ISA, you're gonna see that counter-nutated sacrum. So we're gonna get an ER of the, of the ilium relative to that sacrum. This descends the pelvic diaphragm. The orientation of the acetabulum then is retroverted. So retroverted acetabulum is gonna give us more ER than IR. So this is a normal circumstance for a narrow ISA, narrow IPA for someone that does not have full breathing excursion from inhalation to exhalation. So with a wide ISA under normal circumstances, if they don't have full excursion of breathing, I'm going to see a nutated sacrum under those circumstances and a relatively ir ilium. This should give me more internal rotation of the hip because I've now antiverted the acetabulum. One of the key elements to remember, regardless of the presentation, is when I see a reduction in range of motion availability, I have a concentric strategy or an overcoming contraction that is not allowing motion to occur. So I got a question from Edward from Germany. Very exciting to get a question from Germany. And he has a question regarding to some confusion about the position of the sacrum and the position of the ilium and, and whether we need to consider the position of the lumbar spine in regard to the counter-nutated versus nutated position. I would say absolutely we do. So if I look downward on the pelvis and I've got this nutation, counter-nutation element. Again, keep in mind that I've got a plastic model here, so it doesn't move exactly as we would expect. If I'm looking at the relative position of the pelvis, as I counter-nutate the sacrum, I'm going to have an, an ilium that is externally rotating. Now, under normal circumstances, if I have a counter-nutation, so that's the base of the sacrum tilting backwards, I have a response of the lumbar spine in the opposite position. So I'm actually going to see an element of flexion occurring at the lumbar spine, but this is a very normal occurrence under the circumstances of, of respiration and positions and activities that promote a counter position of the sacrum. If I'm looking at the opposing archetype where I would have a nutated sacrum, so as the sacrum nutates, now I'm gonna get a relative position of internal rotation at the ilium I'll have an increase in the lordotic curve of the lumbar spine, so I'll see extension in the lumbar spine relative to the sacrum. So this occurs under normal circumstances as well in my propulsive strategies or during exhalation. So I hope that clarifies the relationship between the sacrum and the spine whenever we're talking about exhalation, compressive strategies, or inhalation expansive strategies. One additional element to keep in mind is when we're talking about the relative positions of the sacrum to the ilium, these are not the same as an orientation that will occur when the entire pelvis moves as a unit. This is typically not an issue within the pelvis itself, but actually above the pelvis that it will drive it forward. I hope that helps, Edward. I appreciate your question and keep them coming.